principals are here tonight. Uh, Jack Moriarty, Jerry Pancillo, Allison Toombs, the third person, some of you have been to the other meetings, the woman who's a member of the team was uh, very sick with her children in Connecticut, so she wasn't able to make it up here tonight. So, uh, we wanted to continue the discussion. This is for folks who read the orientation. It's the vacant, the, the hole in the ground next to Florida is the Hanover Street site. The Kilometer Street site is what is now known as Teatro Residential at 20 Kilometer Street. Uh, these buildings were both uh, begun in the process of, of um, reuse, if you will, and, and uh, uh, zoning work back in 2002. Uh, and since then, there have been some changes in 2009, and then we have filed applications this year to hopefully complete these jobs. In both cases, we seek to reuse the space inside the buildings which has already been permitted. There is no height addition, there is no uh, building that goes on outside of the space, which has, all of that has already been allowed in these previous decisions. It's now a matter of how the space is utilized. In both cases, we seek to add residential uses to what were permitted originally as retail in both buildings. So you end up with, um, on the Parmenter Street side, if the approval is granted, uh, it, would, it would become three retail spaces get converted to residential use, and three units at the top floor, which were approved in 2009, but only defined as living space, uh, without any further definition, we would request that they become three apartments. Uh, so that that building adds six apartment units three from residential, three from space within that was allowed in 209 and never kind of defined, if you will. So that would end up with a total of 12 residential units in that building. Now that building is occupied today. There are residences in there. Uh, and the additional space is space, as I suggested, it was either earlier retail or earlier approved for living space without definition. So that's, that's the Parmenter Street site. The Hanover Street side, of course, is the, the hole in the ground next to Fiori. Uh, the issue there is very similar in that we would be asking to uh, change commercial space to residential and add seven additional units to the original permitted number of nine. That comes about by reducing size slightly, and we'll go over the numbers for you. In units that were quite large, we reduced them to create certain units of smaller size, to create the additional units. So again, it's all taking place within the envelope of the building. So, you know, again, no height, no height increase or any other such thing involved in that process, other than obviously we need to build the building. And that I think is something that as we've gone around and spoken to when we met with Council Lamatina's office and Nicole the Mayor's office and the BRA, everyone was concerned that we outreach to Fiori and um, I'm going to forget the one saying Claudine, which we've done. We've met with both and we've begun you know, to make agreements with both to hopefully get this project begun. Um, those have been good meetings. I can't stand here and tell you that they're you know, crazy about it, although at the last, at the ZLC meeting, Claudine was there. Claudine? Claudine, I'm sorry. And she said, I just want it done. And it seems that that's kind of the uh, experience that most people have is that they want to see project completed and finished and get the hole in the ground filled and get out of there and get out of people's way. And that's what we'd like to do as well. Uh, we know there's been a horrible history with this project. Um, these guys uh, have been on the scene, on site, working with ISD, working with the BRA, working with the city to try to get this thing done as quickly as possible, and that's our goal. When we presented at ZLC and then recently at the Neighborhood Council, we showed, which I will show you again, a rendering of what the Hanover Street will look like, keeping in mind that parameter doesn't change from an exterior point of view. The rendition that we showed of Hanover Street was an early rendition, and it was not, uh, it, it, it didn't go over very well, I think it's fair to say, at the, at the ZLC meeting. And there were lots of concerns, many of which we share. There, there was an attempt to help out Fiori, who has some very serious concerns about adding residents with windows and looking over into his garden and deck and various places that he has to do business in. So we had a side of the building that was almost entirely blank. And, uh, that's this right here. 
here. It's a little bit difficult to pass the rounds to the original. So you can see that in order to favor Fiore's property, this whole side of the building is white. And people were very uh, much upset with that. And um, we suggested that we'd be going back to take some review it with architects and try to get some discussions going with the BRA, which Jerry has done a great deal of work on. So we'd like to show you we have three different kind of iterations of how to change this to make it more welcoming to the neighborhood. And uh, Jerry can explain some of the conversations he's had with uh, the BRA as well. Right here in front of me, so, you can get here. so in effect, what, what we heard was we would like to see not, uh, not this blank wall here and this blank wall here and this blank wall here. So we're responding and uh, Mr. Fiore has his cafe here. Uh, we also, in speaking with the BRA, the BRA uh, is favoring the sort of contemporary look, but they asked us to think about some kind of a parapet and maybe uh, changing the color of the, of the front to, to make it to feel uh, smaller than it is and bring the, the massing uh, down visually as much as we can. So what we've been working literally trying to you know, spit out as many ideas as we could. And in effect, these three are, are the three key ideas. Uh, and we'll, we'll um, sort of, I want to just quickly run through them. So in this case, we added some, some windows along the side and the, the parapet at the top, and we created a, a, a different kind of panel coloring and texture so that it breaks up the mass and brings the building down. I should say that this, this angle um, is like the most severe angle. We picked the worst condition to present to you simply because we didn't, you know, didn't want in the future if somebody say, you know, they showed us, if we showed it to you from here, it would have looked a whole lot different. So just bear, keep that in mind if you would. So this was to, to break up the massing uh, and to fill in that and to start to show a color change and to add the parapet. This one was to add some similar is to this but adding uh, blank windows that are not real windows because the problem that we have with this is Mr. Fiore at some point could build a building right up against this building and, it, and real windows in this will cause, would have to be then taken out and replaced. And so we, we don't necessarily want to go through that process. On the other hand, we do, we would like to have real windows if we're going to have windows. But this was an idea raised in the last uh, committee meeting to try to begin to create some, some breakup so that the building felt you know, more realistic along the, the side. This one below, now has the inclusion of the windows here, as I meant, it, it shows the parapet, which the BRA had talked about with us, and it shows real windows along the top levels, which we, and we have not been able to meet with Mr. Fiore yet, but we intend to, to sort of see if we can work with him on a, a real window scenario, because we'd prefer that if we could, and maybe, you know, as he thinks about whatever in the future, we'd have to make some arrangements so that we don't have to block those in in the future and maybe he could do windows on his side. So that's a discussion. I can't say that that's the final decision, but you, this is where we're, we're meeting. We, we, you can't see it from where you're sitting here, but we also just incorporated a kind of sort of trellis idea coming off of our building to cover his patio so that we try to tie the restaurant, the you know, try to tie it together a little bit more as a way to try to, you know, yeah, unify the whole if possible. Uh, he would obviously need to work with us on that, but we're open to trying to think about a way to, to do something like that, which I think is beneficial. So uh, we've spoken with the BRA back and forth, email and exchanging ideas and sketches. So this is this is the kind of work product that we've been able to get to. Um, as we said in the last meeting we were here a couple weeks ago, we'll, we'll continue to iterate this and work with the BRA and you know, get it right. But I think we've come a long way from, from here. And I think it, I don't know that there's anything that we haven't responded to and what we heard. And if there is, let me know. Thank you.
throw, so that's the head in the corners. The corners is what you have. You see the corners. But you see the corners here, and you see the corners here. And I, I think if we prefer any scheme, it's this one because it's simpler. It's a simpler scheme, and it not as as. Uh, but but <coughs> this this kind of breakup of the side is important. So it, it could be just a little bit of a combination of those two. But it's it's in that realm. Basically, the CLC was just just the. Uh, Request for the trash garbage room inside. Yeah, which we did accommodate this basically. Uh, I have a call on you, Deputy. Okay, are you finished? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, do we have any abutters to either 20 parmenter or 244 minimum? I want to abut 30 parmenter. No, I like the idea of what he's doing on Parmenter Street, taking the retail off for the residents. Thank you. Do you have any problem with the building? Any other questions? No, another question. Okay. Um, no other questions? Questions? Rob Murray, uh, Veterans War. Did you make quite a bit of effort here? And I appreciate it. Uh, the uh, you just uh, clarify the uh, the metal on the windows. I know the other day at Newark you said you did more of a patina kind of a look that would be less white, uh, more brown, like brown. Yeah, that's, that was just something. Yeah, this is. A brownish color, right. or or we could go with that sort of you know copper greenish, darker green color. This seemed to to, to fit with more of an area yeah. context. Yeah, that makes you know, sense. The, the, the only green is down here on that right. bay. So that was the that was the so thing. Continuing that, they reference it differently, and I didn't know whether it was different. It's also a, a cast sill, so the hand filling that window, is. so it, you'll you'll have the depth. But we'll be able to do something you know, with the definition of the window that's, that's less Perfect. like a mirror. And did you just do what you did the ZLC, uh, which is because of the nature of this rendering, it makes the building look so much taller, but right. obviously it's still 55 feet. Yeah. And this, reference it to what you think is a building that's of equal height. This, this is the same height as this. So that building, the new building would be the same height, where it looks like it's towering off. It looks like a big tall, but it's not. It's like it's 55 feet. But in fact, there was a, there was permission, uh, there was permission on this building to have a roof deck. We we abandoned that because of the you know fact that we didn't want to, you know, we just said to the BRA, look, we don't want to get into a roof deck discussion much rather work and focus on what we need to do. And so we gave up the roof deck uh, in, in that discussion. This is shot at our Could you clarify what you mean by parapet? Uh, it's, it's, this, it's a, uh, a cap on the top of the building. It's, uh, just a, a cornice. it's like a cornice line, so it's a thick cap. It's a thick overhang. It's not overhang so much. It'll hang over a little bit. And see if this one's blind. This one has nothing. This one has kind of a, almost like a hat. So this, this is a, this, this is a in this case, this would be the parapet. But it's okay. like ceiling it's molding. Like a, yeah, yeah. And a room that has ceiling molding. And it helps to, it helps to yeah. keep the building height visually. But it's a six-story building. Five. Five, five. Five. five and then the ground floor. One, two, three, four. Five, this is the entry, and that's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. This is the garage. Total, 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 total is fifty-five feet. Six, 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 six story. Story building. Yes. To fifty-five feet. To fifty-five feet. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I think of five. No. Sorry. David. Yeah. Uh, the rendering also doesn't explain the window well that well. Could you explain it, including dimensions? This, this yeah. piece. What this is is. Um, in order to introduce light, th these units are light starved, if you will. And because we have the eventual condition that Mr. Fiore could build a building right up against us, the only way to introduce light into these, these, this front unit is to create a, a light well. So the light will be shared light coming down and we also can't see it on this rendering, but in the back of the building we have the same condition, so there's an interior light port, which the units in the back of the building function around. How deep is it? It's about 8 by 12, but eight. it runs the full of about 8 by 12. What do you do with what? 8 feet? 12 wide? Yeah. How do you? The well. The well. Oh, good. And okay. the reason 
that is, is could you, you yeah. bring the windows down through the building, yeah. you have to have the volume like cold and, and you have to get enough light down the shaft because it actually does become a place of refuge at the bottom floor if somebody was to blow the window. I mean, that's pretty much why the code was written that way. And it's the same condition in the shaft. Okay, what, what direction I might make it? It's not Mr. Fiore, his name is Fiore Colella. Okay. Not Colella. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I could have. I'm just asking, okay? I don't want to start a whole other line of discussion. I'm just asking. Well, I, it's a little hard to see from here, but it looks like all your solutions to, to try to soften the rectilinearity, which is, as you rightly, I think, are pointing out, <clears throat> that, that the first original rendering is really loves the mass of the building and rather too much to get in, in cruels, maybe. But anyway, did you can give any consideration to other than recta, rectangular shapes in these modifications? Because it doesn't look like you did here. It just looks like you sort of shot it with a, a yeah. shotgun that had rectangular. We don't have a, a naturally square footprint in the building. The, 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 the lot is kind of, and it's, it's a, basically a parallelogram. So that being said, that you've got too much interior geometry to mess with. You know, from looking out, so you need to really square the building up. The only way to square the building up from the inside looking out is to have windows, windows like this. I mean, in terms of window design, like you didn't think of circular or, or anything like that. You know, we, we tended to go to, in, in discussions with the VRA as well, we tended to go to a kind of you know, yeah. more contemporary representation because what the idea is that, you know, 100 years from now, people can look at the street and say, you know, these were brought into being at different periods of time. That's not a question. I was at the last meeting, and we did put something favorable in there where we took into consideration not taking up all the parking spaces. You might want to say you have 25. Uh, yeah, in the building, there, the there are 25 parking spaces underneath, and the, the interest just interesting fact is it's a uh, it's a parking system it's the first time it's been used in uh, Massachusetts so it's a it's a drive-in kind of elevator parking system down in the basement which is actually pretty interesting and we hope it works out <laughs> it's like getting a marshmallow in a piggy bank <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably adjusted is it absolutely certain that uh, Mr. Fiore Colella would have a right to block uh, windows, or is it not the case that the first one there gets the rights? I, I, Victor, I don't know. I mean, it would be a matter of the property lines, but if he has the right to build, and there may have been a party wall here at some point in the past, that may be, I, I wasn't even aware of this until he said it, but I can only imagine that the initial, whatever stood here, may have had a party wall with property next door. And in that case, you know, you, you would not be able to lock up we have to get the variance to, to do the windows that you're requesting. Yeah. So, it, it, because it's right on the, it's right on the, uh, the property line. Yeah, the building well, it, it, it runs actually runs back to the peak position of the building where, where it was originally there. If this was if this was a hay field and there was a lot and a lot where it gets in the first wind, but where it's in the city, if there was a party wall there, then the person on either side has equal rights. So but have any but blocking of light in the air does not become a concern well, at that's that why, point? I mean, that's so why we that is, designed it. Well, let's, let's put it this way. Yeah. If you get a zoning variance to permit windows, then Mr. Colella files for a building permit. Uh, will ISD not say we can't give you a building permit because you're blocking no. the existing windows, which, which are there as a right? Or has become a land quick case? No, yeah, really our, our, under, our understanding of no. that is that we would then be required, we would then have to fill in those windows. Well, in that situation, in the, the Apple Store on Wilson Street, when we built the Apple Store on Wilson Street, there was a bunch of the, um, what was it? The print shop. Yeah, oh, print shop. Print shop. Just the print shop is the Apple Store. Oh, the one that, we, yeah, the way, I forget where it was next. It's now yeah. the Apple Store. Copy Store. Copy Cop? On the left-hand yeah. side, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. the Copy Cop, sorry. Yeah, the building to the east. Yes. And, and something looking over. And, and windows, we had to buy windows, right? 
so we, bought, we basically bought the, well, it was just the easiest thing to do. It didn't become any kind of a, law, a lawsuit or legal action. But I, just, I, I think Jack's right that if, we know there was a building at the site. So the fact that it's gone doesn't change the fact that the law says that that, that was a party blind. And you have to deal with it as a party wall. And if we, we went up and built, you know, contrary to that, we'd be responsible at some point potentially to either pay somebody to make them go away or block them up. I mean, it's if it's a party wall, it's a party wall. So in any in any case, we have this solution that are not real windows. I mean, they're windows, but they're not. You can't see off them or anything. And the, and the units are designed so. These windows, or these windows, are not essential to the living space because we we have this light well. So we'd rather have windows, and we, we won't take out the light well because we don't know <laughs> what will happen in the future. Jason, one two questions. Well, one very quick. Are the windows facing cross street or top of levels? So no, over on the left. No, no, no. no. Uh, can you just explain the. the Parking, exit, and entrance system. So you'll, it's a busy. You'll, there's a gate here, yeah. and you'll there's a, a curb cut. There'll be a well, warning. There's 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 well, it's here. here. There's uh, warning beacons in here. In like a beacon. Light, light up. That's so it. You drive down and park, and you can't. There's going to have to be a, a system so that you know they, two, they can't pass each other. I guess is what yeah. I'm saying. So you're either going to come in or be going out. For the most part, um, what our what our sense of belief is is that most people will just park in there all day long and you know, walk to work or whatever. So they're uh, expecting if there's any traffic, it will come out early in the morning and then later in the evening. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, so is it a flashing light and a noise like that? Yes, it's an enunciator oh, and a flashing. Or oh, someone saying cock. Yeah, yeah we're still trying to figure out. We're trying to make sure it's not. Too loud that it disturbs people, but loud enough that it disturbs people. Do respond to the 
architecture that we have. So I, I understand your point, and, and well, I'll raise it again. Um, so what I tried to do here was was start to show a smaller scale window to actually, because of some of the comments that you had made previously, because we didn't need to have that same amount of, so you see the kind of smaller break of the windows there. I understand about light. I, I live in a unit that has one, one door that goes out to a small balcony and then two normal sized windows, more like you see on some of these other units, and I face the same direction and I get nice daylight because well, there's a little space in front of my building. So I think it's possible on Hanover to, to get adequate light into the buildings without the apartments, without having those large, very modern looking windows. We could look at it, but if we had, you know, a digital morning, we just got to break it up. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start looking like the bricks garage. You know, because, I mean, seriously, you know, and it's just, I didn't mean that to be fresh, but yeah. it's well, just, you know, Bart's suggestion for a rounded treatment, or I think I even brought it up at the ZLC meeting, that the building uh, close to the left side of the picture has bumped out bay-type windows. You see a lot of that in the north end. Dave's grimacing, so. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, that, that was, I should say, the BRA said to us, no bump out bay windows. They, they just said, that's, don't, don't go there in, a, in an attempt to, so. The whole city's low. To, to mimic historic when it's I've been working on this sort of around the clock, trying to make, to get you as much of what you asked for as I could, and I think we've tried to achieve it. And then going outside the property line greater than 18 inches, then it's a public improvements commission issue, a zoning issue, and it's just like. Maybe. Could I have a clarification? Are we voting on the design of the building or on whether this building should be built? We're voting on whether the uh, permit should go from 15 units to 28. Then I'd like to say that I will oppose this because this is one of the most congested areas of the North End already. I don't think we should go in this area from 15 to 28 apartments. Like the what we've done at the Joe Tetchy, old Joe Tetchy site, this crazy doubling the number of apartments. And the idea of putting in 25 parking places at that particular spot, where it's already so hard to get from one quarter to the next down to CBS, um, I will oppose it because it's crowded. It's overcrowded. Although I appreciate the design. If I could just respond a little bit to that. I, I appreciate what you're saying. The, the reason we moved to the residential space is just because the commercial spaces we felt actually were more intrusive in the cars because there's always there is 25 cars in the basement no matter what. The, the 25 cars would be there. And so the, the commercial spaces would create more traffic and be more uh, we felt more uh, setting to the day-to-day. The -day. So that was the rationale, and, and it didn't it didn't make sense that the commercial spaces deep set into this building were going to be viable either. So that was the, that's what's driving, what's driving the decision. Thank you. There's one other thing that, in 2002, this parking garage was approved. So I mean, the garage is already approved as part of this project. That doesn't change. So we're not voting on approval for the parking garage? No, just the number of units were 15 to 28. And okay. Thank you. That was part of it. And, we, and, and I, I do hope we, they are connected. We understand this. But you're looking at 12 units in one building and 16 units in the other building. So when you think of the 28, it's actually two properties. And it's using, again, space that already exists in those buildings. It's just a matter of whether should these be commercial units, which really, um, for these guys and anybody else that I've seen look at, it doesn't make any sense. Um, we just think it's a better use of it, but in any event, the space is there. I think on a normal day, if more than five or six cars leave this building, I'd be totally nice. Most people have been living and working down there. Mm -hmm. anyway, just very quickly, um, on the question of window treatment, uh, I just want to say, please tell the BRA that um, Another person supported 
the comments that Stephanie has made and that Clyde has made, yes. and that is to uh, consider window treatments in context with other window treatments in the neighborhood. Yeah. I definitely will. Inside the windows, the window treatments themselves, we'll be installing those yes, window treatments. We don't see the inside. We see the outside. Right, but you what you see from the outside is what's actually on the inside. So, you know, you know what I mean? Drapers. Fair enough. Fair enough. Jerry's the one dealing with it. It's not going to look like a college office. No need for a debate. Name and speak, please. Uh, Anya Fire, 1240 Hanover Street. I was just wondering, since we're talking about increasing the number of apartments, what the square footage would be, approximately each of those apartments? Yeah, they, they range a little bit. The ones up at the front are about 800 square feet, and the ones in the back, because we're very constricted and have this. Yeah. This need to put this light well in, which wasn't part of the original design, uh, they're in the range of about 500, 550. Uh, there's, there's one bedroom, two bedrooms. Well, one bedroom. Oh, one bedroom. Uh, Mr. Gellman? Uh, David Philadelphia Fleet Street. I just want to clarify what we're voting on. So, uh, we're voting to increase the amount of apartments, but irrespective of that, the, we, our vote does not affect design or the size of the building, correct? Correct. Okay. And we, we do, we provide it to, um, I'm sorry, I just say at the committee level, the actual, you know, zoning field documents would literally speak to the increased number of units and not anything else. So that's, and design review is always a, a BRA responsibility. They, they, that will get attached to this. If we win the case, automatically it will be BRA design review. We have to go through that process. Correct. Uh, sorry, I'll say it very quickly. Uh, uh, apart from whether what's been permitted and what hasn't, and whatever, it, um, I predict that you're going fearlessly predict that you're going to have huge problems with the entry and exit of that parking lot. I don't walk uh, on the sidewalk because I can't walk on the sidewalk for six months of the year. So for you guys to be traversing that sidewalk, I mean, Councilor Lamantino was sort of making the same point too when he was talking about how Hammer Street is really not viable the way it is currently uh, functioning. And it's just an added to the problem. So I'm not criticizing, I'm actually quite, quite the opposite. I, I compliment you on your sensitivity and, and the gracefulness of what you've been, of your approach. Because we get a lot of people here who don't do that. They just come in with a bulldozer and they just think, you know, the community is supposed to do what they want to do. Well, so I, I compliment you on that, but I'm just saying you're going to have a lot of problems with that. I, I, I appreciate that. I just historically, I personally have done other work in the North End of the Air many years ago and, you know, respect the neighborhood greatly and relatives here myself. So I, I, I really do appreciate that. We're trying to take what was a horrible condition meeting 10 years of craziness. And I, I, I do believe we've done as much as we can to work with the neighborhood and to, to make the changes and continue to do so. I, I, but I appreciate that. Yeah. Call the vote. Uh, yes, good idea. Okay, um, do I have a motion to oppose the support? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hopefully, everybody has the yellow ballot. Sir, support or oppose? Okay. Oh, you're still here. Um, 10 support and 16 opposed. Oh.